section uh, 2.5 vectors <clears throat> this is going to be the geometric approach and then in the section 7.5 we're going to do the algebraic approach so these two sections kind of like go together now what is a vector first a vector we define it as a quantity as you can see with a magnitude and direction magnitude means the length of the vector but each uh, topic has its own language so in the vector language, we call the length of the vector as a magnitude. So that's what magnitude is. Direction means we're going to try to find what angle that vector makes, either with a positive x-axis or sometimes the north uh, direction if we're doing more application-wise. So the direction means the angle here. Magnitude means the length. So examples of vectors vector quantities can be force or velocity or acceleration of an object um, we're going to be using throughout these two sections uh, notation special notation so instead of keep writing vector v vector v we just can write v and a small arrow on the top that means vector v uh, the numbers or constants that we use in vectors we call them scalars scalars so scalars not scale scalars Magnitude of vector, we're going to use something looks like an absolute value. It could be like this or it could be like this. Both are fine. That means, uh, that means the magnitude of the vector. And uh, for example, like the zero vector has a magnitude of zero. So if you can write like this. The vector is zero or just write zero vector like that. This has a magnitude of zero. Uh, what is the vector? Because this is a geometric in, uh, interpretation of vectors. So let's say I have a vector v. I draw it like here. And then I have a vector u, like that. I need two vectors. If I want to construct vector negative v, what does that mean? Negative v, this vector has an initial point, as you can see here. And it goes this way. That's the tip of the vector. If I want to draw negative V, I can pick any point at point A, construct negative V. So you draw it, negative means the opposite direction, opposite direction. That's a negative V vector. Opposite direction with the same magnitude. So V and negative V, they have the same magnitude, but opposite directions. Uh, what about if I want to um, a graph, let's say V first, so at point this point I'm gonna graph V okay that's vector V from point T and then vector U from the tip of this vector so that's I'm gonna graph vector U uh, has to be parallel to that vector and the same magnitude so whatever vector V started and vector U ended this one that's called V plus U V plus U and this U uh, V plus U we call it that's called vector W. That's called uh, resultant vector. Resultant vector. So whatever the first vector starts and the second one ends, from that point to that last point, that's the resultant. In physics, they call it resultant force. Uh, what about if I want to construct um, u minus v let's say just u minus v how do you construct it from any point say i have a point here so the first thing i'm going to do is construct vector u which is going to be parallel to the given vector and the same magnitude vector v there's a so this means u plus negative v that's what this means so negative v if you look back at the v the v was uh, going up so negative v would be going this way, opposite direction. So whatever vector u started and negative v ended, which is this one, this is u minus v vector or resultant vector. Okay, that's that's the geometric interpretation of vectors as you can see it. So now how do we apply it uh, just to real life applications? Let's say we have a boat that is going um, east direction this is the east and the boat started here so the boat is going traveling at 15 miles per hour okay the boat is traveling 
in the east direction 15 miles per hour okay so this is the north direction and let's say the vec the boat was traveling this way and now we have a current current that is traveling north so a current that is going up north this way that's a current with 4.8 miles per hour now when the boats are going east and there's a current pushing up north then it's not going to keep going east so it's going to shift a little bit more up so it's going to go maybe this way from this point up what we like to find find the course or the actual course find the actual course of the boat so when they say actual force the actual course we need two things we need to find let's call this V we need to find the magnitude of V what's the magnitude of V and we would like to know the direction of the V like if I call this theta we would also like to know what angle does that boat make with the north direction what is theta okay so that's important to find um, the first thing I'm gonna find is theta remember this is 90 so these two lines here these two directions are parallel so if this is theta this is also theta we call them alternate interior angles they come like a Z shape so how am I gonna find that theta so I can use opposite is given adjacent given so that would remind me of tangent tangent theta is the opposite over adjacent so if I want to find theta I do tan inverse of 15 over 4.8 and if we put it in the calculator this will give us to the nearest degree 72 degrees so that's theta that's the angle that the vector makes or the or the actual course uh, a vector makes with the north direction now how do I find V it's not difficult so to find V we use the Pythagorean theorem in the triangle so the magnitude of V square is 15 square plus 4.8 square so if I want to find V the magnitude of V is the square root of 15 square plus 4.8 square if you put this in the calculator that gives us about 16 miles 16 miles so we can say um, miles per hour so the actual course is 16 miles per hour you can write this way at north is coming from the north 72 degrees heading toward the east so that's really a good example of the use of um, magnitude and direction of a vector on the top of this we can always look at if in general we have x y plane any vector we would like to do it we start always at the origin that's vector u let's say uh, the distance is the magnitude of u like so if I drop a height down this and I'm gonna call this angle alpha this uh, horizontal distance we call it the magnitude of u in the x direction and that's the magnitude of um, of u in the y direction so if I try to find sine alpha that would be opposite over the hypotenuse uh, over u so if I want to find the magnitude in the y direction we take if you cross multiply here it's u the magnitude of u times sine alpha similarly if I find cosine alpha is the adjacent over the hypotenuse so it's going to be the magnitude of x is the magnitude of u times cosine alpha now these two things that I just found those are called the components of the vector so those are called those are called components those are called the components of vector 
you with UY is the vertical specifically is the vertical component and UX is the horizontal component so in general note that the magnitude of U is going to be always the square root of UX square plus UY magnitude square and we applied this in the previous example so how can we apply this even further than that let's look at another example here let's say a person shot an arrow into the air so that its horizontal velocity is 16 feet per second and its vertical velocity is 9 feet per second find find the velocity of the arrow we need to find the velocity of the arrow so if I want to sketch a diagram for this this is x y and they said let's say it's shot this way that's vector v okay so that vector uh, has a, a horizontal component of 19 of 16 feet per second and a vertical component of 9 feet per second and then if you drop a height down here that's the same as the 9 feet because this figure now it's a parallelogram so this is 9 feet per second as well call this angle alpha so if I want to find alpha, for example, so tan alpha is the opposite over adjacent. So then alpha would be tan inverse of 9 over 16. If you put that in the calculator and make sure that the mode is degrees, you get 29 degrees. And this gives us really, the this angle is called um, the angle of elevation. angle of elevation of the arrow that's the angle of elevation of the arrow and if I want to find the magnitude of V again is the square root of 16 square plus 9 square and this one gives us about 18 feet per second that's the vector what can be more applications to vectors in this case, um, let's say more applications, applications to vectors. Let's say uh, someone is applying a force at an object. So you have you have an object here, and someone is applying the force this way. So we would like to um, investigate this. So if, if a constant force it's important that the force is constant force F is applied to an object and moves and moves the object into or in in a straight distance d so it, it moved from one place to another distance d then we define the work the work that was done on this to be 
the magnitude of the force times cosine theta and I'll show you what that is times the distance traveled so theta here is the angle between the line of motion of the object and the force F that's what uh, that's what theta is so to see it here on the figure that would be like if you're applying the force this way okay and this is the direction of the motion this would be theta this would be theta so what happened here is if we um, look at a specific example from the textbook so the we can take a uh, number 48 on page 118 from the textbook and I'm gonna read the problem just in case if you don't have the textbook with you so the question said the package is pushed across a floor a distance of 52 feet so they pushed it with a distance of 52 feet so there was an object here and it was pushed to a new place this distance between the new one and the original position of the object is 52 feet and the uh, force was applied this way so extend it a little bit there was a force applied and by applying a force the force is given 15 pounds 15 pounds downward at an angle of at an angle of 35 degrees so the angle is this angle here 35 degrees with the horizontal that's what the horizontal is how much work is done so how much work was applied to the object to get it from point A to point B and these two distances are 52 feet apart how much work was done that's a very interesting to see how trick was used or is used to uh, to find the work done if the angle that the force was applied is it formed that was 35 degrees with the horizontal and it would be more interesting if you like to try this what about if I change the angle here keep the force the distance everything the same how much work will the work increase or decrease if I change that angle 35 make it 50 or I make it 20 degrees will the work increase or decrease so let's see we defined earlier that the work is the magnitude of the force times cosine theta all that times the distance traveled so the force that was given to us is 15 cosine the angle here is 35 degrees and all of this get multiplied by the distance that the object was moved from A to B and if we put this into the calculator that will give about 639 feet dash pound so that would be the work that was needed basically to apply it to the object to move it from A to B okay with an angle 35 degrees with the horizontal and for a distance of 52 feet again as I said assume it's the same object change the 35 into 50 if you like to try this just for fun or change it down to 20 degrees and see if more work is needed or less work in each case comparing to the 35 degrees that's what this section is about it's the geometric interpretation of vectors this um, force that was applied that's the vector force okay just so you know you might say what this has to do with vectors that's the vector force and this distance this thing here this is f sub x so that's like the force in the x direction in the, the horizontal force the horizontal direction so that's uh, another thing good to know in this section um, and other than that we're going to continue talking about vectors in the next section which is 7.5 not 2.6 but 7.5